John Bryce, footballscoop.com. We've had Zach Barnett on many, many times. John as well, and he joins us now on 365 Sports with Greg and Paul and David Smoke. John, thanks for your time. A couple of nice nuggets for you guys with stories, including that meeting up in Frisco. But let's start with the G5 and trying to, like even you said, carve out their own space. What what are the pros or the cons, in your opinion, if there are any negatives in having their own top 25? Um, you know, the, the perception is, is what fans, I think, are worried about and, and maybe even some university presidents as we continue to talk about this uh, and, and talk with our contacts around the country. They, they're in 85 scholarship programs in these group of fives and um, they want to be seen as able to compete on the, the largest playing fields and, and to have a role at the, the big table. But the fact of the matter is, um, especially with the Big Ten and SEC having that alliance and the way that um, those two are, are trying to break off and take care of their own interests, that it's making it harder and harder for the group of five programs to, to get a legitimate seat at the table. And um, you've got 64 programs approximately in the group of five and you got one playoff spot at most uh, that that group is going to give that leaves a lot of really good teams uh, potentially on the sidelines or, or looking at bowl games that are going to frankly be further de-emphasized as we transition into a 12-team playoff in college football john is this um i used the metaphor earlier of uh is this filling the storm cellar before the storm hits <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. I, I think, uh, again, I talked to people involved with uh, the, the proposal for a group of five playoff today. I talked to uh, an athletics director about all of this last week, some other coaches. It, it's, when you look at NFL rosters, and that's a, a point that an SEC coach made to me today, he was like, look, there's a lot of good football in the group of five. And he point blank said, he said, I'd watch it. If you're telling me there's a group of five, number two team versus the number nine team, on a Wednesday or Thursday night and we're not playing, he said, yeah, I would watch that for sure. So I do think it's just, again, trying to ensure that these programs still maintain viability and visibility. And uh, like the, There's 64 teams. I, I keep going back to that. And there's a lot of really good teams in that. And there are a lot of really good players on NFL rosters that hail from those programs. Yeah, John, I, I don't see any downside to this. I, I don't see any harm that can come from it other than just, like, stepping into the, the future that, that people seem to think is there for you. It's like, well, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. You might as well try and, you know, create some some excitement uh, if that's going to be the case. But you mentioned talking to some some folks about just, in general, this, the, the playoff idea. What kind of responses did you get uh, in terms of the playoff idea that was, was out there a couple of weeks ago for the, the G5 teams? Yeah, a really strong response, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, I think the next step in that is getting probably university presidents aligned with it, again, that are cognizant of what kind of message are we sending, what are the true pros of this, does it fiscally make sense. Um, and, again, I think Derek Dooley has uh, done a good job of getting preliminary financial backing for that uh, proposal. I know from speaking with a number of people that Derek Dooley has met with group of five ADs around the country to try and help make this happen and continue on a journey to actualize this group of five playoffs. Uh, and uh, again, I've, I've got friends at ACC coaches, contacts uh, at ACC schools, coaches there that are worried if they're going to have a seat at the new super table, if it's only 40 or 50 teams and you've got 34 teams combined from the SEC and the big 10 and, and, so, again, I think a lot of times college football, maybe college athletics in general, um, drag their feet on some things, and that's probably why NIL is the mess that it is today. But these are some people uh, who are trying to be proactive and, and, again, carve out a space for a lot of really good football teams to um, maintain relevance and, and give people even more reason to want to tune into one of those games. Any idea how Oregon State and Washington State would be viewed? I would assume that they would be a part of this, but they're in a weird limbo, obviously, for the next couple of years. Um, would, I, I would assume, or do you know, as, as has been mentioned at all, whether or not those two teams would be included in, in, in something like this, or, or how about independence? Yeah, um, what I was told is that they wouldn't necessarily be considered um, for, the, for the top 25 poll 
if it gets off the ground uh, as they're trying to do by the 1st of August. And again, I do think it's worth noting that um, some people working on this are far enough down the road that they've already secured a title sponsor. Um, and I'm not sure when they're ready to announce who that title sponsor is, but um, we, we at Football Scoop have seen some of the documents. We know that they have secured a title sponsor. As far as uh, but I don't think Oregon State and Washington State would be considered for the for the group of five top 25 because it's my understanding those two programs are still trying to find viability elsewhere, whether that's um, a way to join the Big 12 or to have some sort of conference uh, or scheduling arrangement more long-term with the Big 12 as opposed to what they're doing right now with the Mountain West. Uh, that remains a great question, but it was emphasized to me that, that Oregon State and Washington State aren't ready to – um, accept their potential fate as becoming group of five or left out program. John, if, if in fact you could pull all the 60 plus teams, how many of them or how many of the football coaches do you think would want the separate poll? That's a, that's a really good question. I think um, we, we know coaches, we know coaches that sometimes uh, have recruiting rankings, tied to their bonus structure. So hmm. I can see coaches warming to this idea because it would be another metric to measure the progress of their programs and to, to potentially have bonus structures to say, hey, if we are if we finish the season ranked in the top five in the group of five, top 25, I get a $50,000 bonus. Or if we advance to the group of five playoff, it's a $25,000 bonus. Or if we win two games, it's a $50,000 bonus. I think – I think coaches would come around to it. Coaches I've talked to um, are certainly in the past couple of weeks more so about the potential playoffs than the than the top 25 ranking. They've been open to it, uh, again, because they know, and, and being at those DFO meetings last week, it's such a clear case of the haves and have-nots, and, and I'm not sure it's ever been uh, more divided. And as it was put to me, uh, within the last couple of days, it's getting so much harder for those G5 teams to hang on to their rosters year after year that if this can be something the playoff can be something that helps them financially maybe it helps some of these g5 programs stabilize a little bit john uh, how much i mean like i said they're preparing for the storm and all, all all those things is there a sense you get that they're about to say well just forget about it and like if you want to take one of our teams to the playoff fine but we really 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 have to move on yeah, I think so. I think that there's a lot of frustration. Uh, and again, there's good football. And, and none of these coaches is saying they can't compete with these teams uh, on a weekly basis or whatever. We've seen Marshall knock off Notre Dame a couple of years ago. We saw Marshall um, knock off Virginia Tech last year. It's not been that long since Billy Napier took Louisiana to Iowa State and absolutely spanked the Cyclones. And so no, no coaches are, are shirking from competition. I don't want anyone to think that that's the case or that that's the and I don't think that should be the narrative but their coaches trying to make sure their programs have a seat at some table and um, a, with 64 teams in those group of five conferences or 62 in conferences and two of them independent um, 64 is almost enough for its own division and it's again far more like-mindedness and and like resources among those programs than what you're seeing from a um, Troy or an Alabama uh, a Marshall or a Louisiana or Louisiana Tech or, or any of those. John Bryce again with us, footballscoop.com. You also, uh, both you and Zach, and, you know, every day there's something about whether it's NIL, the transfer portal or whatever. You, uh, you were a part of a meeting up in Frisco with football ops and also senior administrators. And I saw that one note that said, we wanted to do it like that, you know, we weren't going to like recruit people that wanted money or ask for money immediately. And that lasted for, I think they may have said like six weeks or six months. What was the overall thought or what was the overall mood walking out of that meeting that you were a part of? I'm going to be honest with you. It was empathy for those DFOs who I don't know a, a DFO in college football who probably isn't already overworked. And now after being with, so many of those men and women for three days last week in Texas, um, it's getting worse and it's going to continue to get worse for them until there's more of a uh, set of guardrails in place around 
NIL and around the transfer portal. I had multiple DFOs tell me, and we wrote this in the story, that they're now responsible for helping fundraising to supply salary money, basically, for their NIL salary caps or their salary pools. And um, or I had one gentleman tell me that basically he's assigning his DFO, his assistant DFO, to be a full-time fundraiser. And his goal every day is to reach out to X number of um, alums and benefactors and donors to the program and ask them how they feel about contributing on a regular basis to NIL. And also, I think NIL is moving closer and closer to being an in-house entity at more schools. I think that's going to be another one of the next steps. But that that's the meeting is that you had DFOs who already had to cancel their meetings that they normally have at the AFCA convention in January because of the transfer portal and the recruiting calendar. And they had to stay back and help organize visits and, and bring people out of the portal onto campus um, for official visits at that time. So they pushed to May to have more time to go over uh, some really important and diverse topics. And you still had DFOs all three days having to walk out of the, the meeting room in order to try and help coordinate visits with, with kids in the portal who wanted to come on official visits or kids that were reaching out saying, I'm really interested in your program, but also here's my asking price. So I just feel a lot of empathy for those folks because, again, they do so much work behind the scenes, and now it's being – piled even more on them and, it, and it's a nebulous system right now without guardrails it's college football so we know there's some some sliminess to it from time to time it's part of why we love it it's also just part of a, what's ingrained in it but uh you know I've, I've heard some some tales when it comes to recruiting but having a guy like basically have to be there to monitor the post-game handshake lines to prevent tampering it's just like that is so college football but that's I guess what it's what it's come to at this point that you can't even have a handshake line after a game without needing to monitor your players because of somebody trying to slide in there like it's their dms or something yeah and and, and we had that in the story as you guys know but uh just a little bit more detail on that um there was a dfo who indicated um the pro the program he worked for witnessed this happen uh, over the past season. Two different instances. There was also another program that indicated um, their head basketball coach had witnessed it happen as well. Mm. Wow. Well, okay. So we know there's this this gulf that's grown, and it's it's not going to ever be surmountable. I mean, it, it is just is kind of is what it is. But um, with all this talk about you know putting caps and um, NIL and all this stuff, where do these groups of schools kind of fall in line with what they are capable of doing and, and when what is kind of the threshold that, that can't be crossed, so to speak? I mean, is there enough com- commonality between all these? And yet, are there still those that are, you know, have their own built-in advantages or is everybody kind of in the same spot? How, how, how would you describe that, I guess? Um, well, I think at the upper level, um, the, the true super super team, so to speak, or the or the super funded athletic budgets. There's a there's a clear separation there. Uh, now I, I talked with uh, a, a DFO who indicated that his uh, the program was spending a lot of money, but they're still struggling every month to make sure that they're able to to basically meet payroll. Um, as it pertains to the to the G5 coaches, I've talked to some guys who have said, "Hey, we're kind of leaning into it," and we've told people, um, "Maybe you're disappointed right now that you're ended up at our program when." Power School A or Power, Power School B was recruiting you, and then they took somebody in the portal instead of you. And and they said, we're leaning into that thing. Come play for us for two years. If you're good enough going into your junior year and, for, and power teams come back around and start recruiting you, we'll try to help you go to those power programs. So, again, I think there's an acknowledgement of the reality of things. Um, you've got people that uh, one DFO last week, that we're trying to pay our, our guys $500 a month or $1,000 a month. And then um, you've got multiple SEC programs that have NIL salary pools of literally a million dollars a month for their entire rosters. John, really good stuff, man. I'm glad we got you on the show. Thanks for your time. Great stuff with what you and Zach produced in uh, Frisco, but also with this latest that you popped on the G5. We'll have G.J. Kenny here in just a second to get his feedback on that too. John Bryce of footballscoop.com and this is 365 Sports. Tech